Hey guys, this is BenRob0329 and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 5 open source tools as well as some tips and tricks to help you make your content. A common problem I found is that a fair amount of the information on the internet is either scarce or outdated, so this is meant to be up to date as of late 2016. Please also note that all the information can be found in the link down in the description below. Number 5. Shotcut is a cross-platform video editor fulfilling the needs of most simple projects. Some features include simple transitions and effects, multi-track editing, a simple user interface, and various filters. I would recommend Shotcut only if your project is rather simple, as this is one of the most basic editors I have used. Simplicity can be a powerful tool, however, as this makes Shotcut relatively beginner-friendly. I would save your work often, though, as it has been known to crash when performing heavy tasks. Number 4. OpenChat is another cross-platform video editor suitable for most indie projects. It has various transitions, multi-track editing, Blender-based animated titles, keyframed animations, as well as a streamlined user interface. I would recommend OpenShot for small to medium-sized projects. I wish I could say more about it, however I haven't gotten to use it much as it doesn't seem to want to work for me. Number 3. Blender is a cross-platform Swiss Army knife of 3D, 2D, photo, and video editing tools. Features include a fully node-based 3D rendering engine, video sequence editor, 2D animation via 3D orthographic or grease pencil animation, node-based compositing, a multitude of plugins, and a respectable user interface. Blender does have its shortcomings though, for all of its features it is one of the most difficult programs to learn that I have encountered. Though once tamed can be a very powerful tool for advanced projects and animation. Blender can be slow however. This is most obvious when using it on slower or older hardware, as the user interface can stop entirely whilst doing a heavy task. Blender is also slow when exporting. Even just a simple transcode can take hours even on very fast hardware for larger videos. I would recommend Blender if you need to do any sort of 3D animation or if you need advanced compositing and video editing. Otherwise, a simpler and often faster solution should more than suffice. Number 2. Both Krita and the GIMP are cross-platform digital painting and photo editing programs. I can't really recommend one or the other as they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Krita is generally praised for being the better tool for digital painting and for having an intuitive user interface. However, it does lack the large user base and maturity that GIMP has. I personally find it difficult to switch to Krita from GIMP as they do some key things differently such as adding text, centering layers, and other basic tools. Both are invaluable tools for making overlays, thumbnails, and drawings. I would recommend Krita for the artist and GIMP for anything you can't do well in Krita, but it all really comes down to personal preference for most basic usage. It should be noted, however, that a fair amount of people say that Krita will probably surpass GIMP entirely given a few years' time, though it's mostly speculation at this point. Honorable Mentions Synfig Studio is a cross-platform 2D animation program mostly using splines. I have not used it much at all, but it is worth noting for 2D animators. Pivity is an in-development video editor based on Python, GStreamer, and the Go object libraries. It is relatively usable in its current state, however I experienced a fair amount of UI lag when attempting to playback a 1080p recording. It is worth keeping an eye on as a future video editing option. Number 1 Cadena Live is a mostly Linux and BSD only video editor. Features include multi-track editing, many effects and transitions plugins included by default, support for capture cards as well as remotes, and keyframeable effects with animations. Cadena Live is relatively simple to use but is advanced enough for small to large projects where you don't need advanced video effects. Some of the effects don't appear to have been updated in some time however, so if you notice one just has scrolling sliders where controls should be, it isn't going to work. Kidney Live can be built on Mac OS X using Mac ports, though I do not believe doing so is very supported. If someone can correct me on that in the comments, I will pin their comment to the top so everyone can see. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and comment down below for things you want in a future video. Thanks for watching.